First on Verizon Wireless Lakers line. Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, Charlie. Hey, um, I really want to talk about Kobe's off-ball defense because we've seen it all before. Like we've seen him play some bad off-ball defense, but we all know that, like in the All-Star game, he locked up LeBron. We've seen him go to the first All-Defensive Team multiple years, but you just saw it. That Trevor was literally camping in the corner, a guy that he's played with for about three or four years. And he can't lock him down after that sick three-pointer that he made in the corner. I just don't understand what was up with him keep going away and trying to help and leaving him literally wide open four or five times in a row. Yeah, grand total of seven three-pointers. Charlie, thanks a lot for the phone call. Uh, wow, yeah, 9 of 15 for uh, Trevor Reza, 7 of 12. 7 of 12. I just can't believe I'm even speaking those words. But uh, that is exactly what Trevor Ariza had today with uh, 25 points off the bench. Um, no, not uh, not a good moment for Kobe Bryant. I mean, he had the, the offensive numbers were there with the exception of the six turnovers, but uh, defensively, uh, he, they needed him in that second half, and he was not able to provide uh, much, if uh, anything. 877-710-3776. 877-710-3776. Coming up, more reaction from the Lakers uh, losing to the Wizards 103-100. been what 10 days almost two weeks but um we're back at it not only do nba players need breaks but sometimes the podcasters do the lakers blog bloggers do the lakers editors do the lakers media gurus do (laughs) what's going on guys it's kb24 status aka the biggest Laker fan in the world. Today, we are going to talk about a much needed, much needed victory that we honestly 
showed a lot of resilience in this game. We're going to focus on certain players like B.I., Josh Hart, uh, obviously LeBron, LeBron Kuzma's and B.I.'s minutes, really high minute payload, um, Luke's rotations. Lance was an outcast once again. Josh Hart played only 18 minutes. He was a plus 22. A lot of different things. And we'll really talk about another player I want to talk about is Reggie Bullock. He had a great, great, great game. First game ever as a Laker at Staples Center. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, so let's start with B.I. Um, he had a season high third. Fourteen rebounds. He shot fourteen free throws. He made eleven. That's a goddamn miracle to put that in perspective. Nobody else in the Lakers shot more free throws than him. Nobody else in the whole entire game shot more free throws than Brandon. Jay Hard Beard shot seven free throws. Brandon shot double at fourteen. 11 for 14, 79%. That's improvement, heading in the right direction. Everybody else in the starting lineup was 100%. Kuz, 4 for 4. JaVale, 3 for 3. Reggie, 2 for 2. Except LeBron at 7 for 10, shooting 70%. LeBron and Luke, you know, if you followed the pregame, the shooting, um, the shoot-arounds, they said that... um, they were stressing free throw percentage, uh, making free throws at crucial times, and also, of course, the turnovers. And we still had 18 turnovers, but that's um, okay. I think the the pace of this game is so fast. Like, every single time we play the Rockets this year, I think this is the third time? I could be wrong. There's a chance this might have been the final one, but I don't know. Every single time we play them, though, it's like... The Lakers are adopting the eight seconds or less rule from D'Antoni just for the one game. And 18 turnovers is really like 10 turnovers in a normal game because, like, it's just so frantic. Just spend four seconds, Chris Paul looking up the court, and he finds someone, bam, that possession's over. So the more possessions, the more the turnovers, but... Yeah, just super high-paced. Um, so, yeah, Brandon had 27 points, shot 50%, 8 for 16 from the field. He was 0% from 3, 0 for 3. The sexy-ass 13 rebounds, only one assist. That's rare. Because usually B.I. defers, but I don't know, That that's strange. Somehow Kuzma had 5 assists. Usually it's flipped. I don't think I've seen Kuzma have five assists all season. <laughs> but yeah, B.I. had four turnovers. LeBron had four turnovers. Rondo had four turnovers. So our three guards, our three-point guard, quote-unquote, because B.I. is not technically a point guard, and of course neither is LeBron, technically, had 12 combined turnovers. But, like I said... when you're the, When you're dominating the ball, when you're the ball handler, when LeBron says... With a minute and a half left in the game, go to work, B.I. It's okay to turn over four times because, like I said, you go, the more the possessions, yada, 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 the less value, the turnovers are valued less. Um, let's talk about Reggie, Reggie real fast. And we'll do him a story time, probably. BT dubs. Um, so, Reggie, he played some really good defense on Jay Harden on uh, Harden, because I really, really liked his active hands. I think KCP, Reggie, and uh, Rondo a little bit were, like, pretty scrappy and just active and just irritating, Um, you know, irritating Harden. Uh, KCP is really, really good at acting on those picks. Um, But Reggie especially, I, I, I didn't expect, you know, I didn't expect him to be as active on Harden and that one play when remember he dove for the loose ball and Harden was lucky and called the timeout um when the ball was loose between his legs. Um 
That was a good effort. Unexpected. Unexpected. Interesting how he's been a certain of the starting lineup this game and the last couple of games, but it's definitely let Josh Hart follow the rotation. And not only Josh Hart, more specifically Lance with only five minutes, but he played well, Reggie. He had four for eight from three. That's 50%. Every single shot Reggie took was a three. No penetration, no, no, nothing at the rim. Four for eight from three, four for eight overall field goals. That's crazy. That's literally like a sniper, sniper, sniper. That's Kyle Korver said. It's like, I, I ain't doing anything. I'm just staying out here. I'm not going to go to the rim. Because if I go to the rim, I'm going to get swatted. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so he had uh, 14, 4 for 8, 50% from the field, 5 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 steal. It felt like he had more than 1 steal, though. But he was definitely pressuring Harden on the ball. I really liked how they, they wouldn't mind when Harden went for the two. Like, they literally just tried, hey, you can take this two. We're not going to leave Capella wide open and help and let Capella get going. They're like, no, you can take it. I think that's smart. Get get him off his three-point game. I think Harden only made two threes. Harden was two for ten from three. And, of course, Harden and Chris Paul both fouled out. But that's definitely a rarity to see someone go 2 for 10 after having, you know, the offensive tear that they're having. Um, yeah. Harden also had eight turnovers, so bravo. <laughs> and I don't think I'm talking about Josh Hart yet. I'm going to do that right now. So Josh, he um, only shot 2 for 3, had 4 points. Only shot one three, had only two turn uh two rebounds, one assist, one turnover. And he was the highest plus minus on the Lakers. And most likely, yeah, the highest plus minus in the whole freaking game. Josh Hart, I believe, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Josh didn't play a single minute in the first half. And I don't know if that was uh I don't know if that's because Reggie started and Lance was in. I don't know. If he was just feeling out his, uh, I think it's his leg that's hurt. I'm pretty sure it's his leg or his knee or something like that. I don't know if he was just feeling it out. I'm not sure. But after this performance, defensively, I think you have to not wait a whole half to put Josh Hart in. That's pretty much where I'm at. <laughs> but yeah, you know, a lot of these players, Lance only played five minutes, but when you give Lance 20 minutes, it could be the best 20 minutes off the bench, the biggest spark plug, or it could be terrible 20 minutes and four turnovers and uh, acting and dancing and not being engaged. So it's okay that Lance didn't play five because his minutes were taken over by someone who is better defensively, who's really good at driving to the rim and getting right there. So, yeah. And that 1-3 Josh Hart, that was a flat air ball. Whew. Someone opened a window there, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, so what else? I don't know. Well, a lot is there to say about LeBron. He's a beast. It's interesting how he turns it up later. It's like he's... He reminds me of Steph Curry in the sense that Steph once said he was like... Um, Steph said he learned from, like, Phil Mickelson or some golfer. He said, um, Steph was like, I, uh, the golfers told me to take each game in, like, five different sections. Like, like, like break up a basketball game into five different sections and, like, use your energy for certain stretches. Because, like... I guess it's more like preserving your energy for the fourth and fifth the uh, back end of the game, which sounds obvious, but, you know, some teams obviously tire out and they lose their legs, especially on back-to-backs and stuff. And it sounds like Steph has it down in terms of conditioning and knowing when to be assertive and knowing when to go beast mode. And LeBron has that, obviously. LeBron's obviously one of the greatest of all time but especially this game I think he had eight points in the first half and if it wasn't the first half it was like four it was eight in the first quarter but I'm pretty sure he had eight in the first half so he erupted he scored 21 points in the second half played 40 minutes which 
40 minutes is a lot after taking a week and a half off. Because it's not like in the All-Star game you played 40 minutes. In the All-Star game you probably played like between 15 and 25, 30 minutes. So, interesting choices there. It's just that, once again, Brandon Ingram with 41 minutes, he can take that. He's young. Got the legs. Kuzma at 37. Like, he, he doesn't mind doing that. But, you just got to be cautious with LeBron a little bit. We obviously needed him. For the games like versus the Hawks, if we can just blow them out like normally, and then we could use LeBron, give him some rest. So, I'm going to get some story time right now. I'm going to get to that. Um, I recently have been wearing these sweaters. Because in Los Angeles, for some reason, it's colder than usual during our December to February stretch. And I have found this purple Lakers sweater. And it's really old. And on the back, it says Wall Street Journal. (laughs) So I guess Wall Street Journal is giving away free Lakers sweatshirts. But it's really nice. It's really nice. Um, I also have two yellow Lakers sweatshirts. um, And one of them, they're identical. They're both yellow. And like in cursive, it says Lakers since 1948, I believe. Um, That's what happened with that. But those sweaters, as my friend... Uh, and he ripped a hole in one of the sweaters, and it was hilarious. <laughs> so I had to I just had to stitch it up, you know, do the whole female female sewing kit, everything, or just do a do it just the way I wanted it. And um, it was just funny, you know. I have all this Lakers gear, and I really protect it, but this fool just rips a hole in it by accident. <laughs> So I guess this isn't really like a Lakers story time. I just thought it was funny because it's recent. It's not like this happened three years ago. This happened like a week ago. <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it for the podcast. Um, slash on YouTube. Um, I'm changing up the intros. Using different music, you'll notice. Uh, I'm trying to experiment. See what works, see what doesn't. I wouldn't mind some input. Email me, DM me, whatever you want to do. I really, really value all opinions. Uh, Last thought, I'm looking forward to this road trip versus the Pelicans and the Grizzlies. I think it's very, very possible that... I, I think we're capable of beating the Grizzlies and the Pelicans because, you know, the Grizzlies, I think, are just tanking for Zion and the Pelicans are obviously in a crisis after firing Del Dems for being a dumbass. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, I'm Chuck. Charles Ryan. Chucky Atkins. Charles Barkley. Kobe 24 MP3. And yours truly the greatest Lakers fan. The biggest Lakers fan. The most obsessed Lakers fan in the world. You know, it's interesting, uh, Magic and Luke and I, and, and with Jeannie too, we all sat down before the trade deadline and just talked about some things on the roster we really wanted to try to tweak or improve, and one of them was perimeter shooting. Um, and Bullock is an elite catch-and-shoot guy, one of the top ones in the league. Um, Svee's an amazing player and was hard to give up, but as a rookie, we kind of wanted a guy that could do it now, and Reggie Bullock... Um, he's had, you know, a 43% um, uh, three-point shooting season in last year, and so he's an elite, elite shooter. And when we have a guy like LeBron, we want to give ourselves the best chance to go deep in the playoffs. I felt like he was a key piece for that. He also added Mike Muscala from the Clippers. What, what can he do for you guys? When we look, at, when we took a look at our five spot, Brez, we, um, you know, we had three elite rim protector, rim rollers, and we felt like we wanted to diversify that position a little bit. Um, it was hard to trade uh, Zoo, great player, great young player, but 
we feel like Muscala can spread the floor and add a stretch five, play some four as well. Um, again, just open up the court for our drivers like Rondo, uh, LeBron, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo when he comes back. I think it's important. We just felt like if we tweaked our roster a little bit from a chemistry standpoint and added some shooting, if we could just make that push, get that eighth spot or seventh spot, get in the playoffs, and then let a player like LeBron do what he does in the playoffs. All right, there was the trade that was widely reported, uh, the potential trade, I should say, with New Orleans did not happen. How close were you guys to making a major move to kind of reshuffle this roster? Yeah, you know, the NBA rules are so strict around us talking about any specific transaction, any specific trade, any specific player on another team, so can't really get into that. But I will tell you this, overall, you know, from Genie to Magic to myself to Luke, we always want to be aggressive to do everything we can to try to put ourselves in a championship position every season. And so at every trade line, this one and future ones, we're going to continue to be aggressive to do that until we accomplish that mission. Yeah, it brings me to my next question, the summer <coughs> season, whenever it hits for you guys. How aggressive will you be then when you maybe look at adding a pretty big piece at that point? You know, Brez, our plan when we made the trade and created the double max room was to get two pieces, and obviously LeBron was the first, and we still have work to be done this coming July. And I think you can look around the league now and sort of what we did in creating two spaces. I think a lot of teams have said, oh, maybe, that, maybe that's a good model to pursue. And, of course, now you see the Knicks have made some moves to open up major room, the Clippers, others. So um, I think this July is going to be a really, really interesting offseason. And um, we stand positioned to be really, really aggressive and feel like we have all the pieces here that if a player decides to come and join this platform, that it'll be a you know championship caliber group right away. Uh, a lot of the young Lakers mentioned in some of these trade rumors over the last couple of weeks. Do you imagine feel the need to, to talk to them or sit down with them or anything like that? You know, I think at the end of the day, all of us have jobs um, that are being publicly discussed. You know, the wins and losses in the front office are publicly discussed. You know, good trade, bad trade, same for players. And I think it's when we invite ourselves, you know, or we have the blessing, I guess, to be in this business, you realize that's just part of the territory. I think it's important um, to recognize that's part of the business and hopefully with the trade deadline over, the group will just stay together. We have a mission to try to make a playoff push, get in the playoffs, and um, and make some noise. You look at a guy like Luke Walton. He's had to coach uh, a unique year, to say the least, with injuries, uh, the trade rumors, uh, some unique personalities on the team. How would you assess his situation? Luke's done an amazing job. We're totally unified. Magic and Luke and I talk all the time. Through this whole um, trade deadline process, um, we would spend hours on the phone just kind of uh, going over different roster compositions, different skill sets we needed, and. Um, our communication is lockstep, and he's been, you know, tremendous. I think he has a, a, a passion to get this team in the playoffs, and you're going to see him aggressively coach us to the very end, and we're going to all stay together and support one another. And you mentioned the playoffs. Do you feel like this team is constituted to make the playoffs, and, and if they get there, do some damage? There's no question that was the goal, and when we had an insignificant slew of injuries, we were fourth. You know, we were just a couple games back from second or third seed in the West. We were fourth when, on Christmas Day when LeBron got injured. But we can't look at that as an excuse. I think you have to look at it as an opportunity. You know, life is full of circumstances that you can't predict. They fly at you, and you have to react to it. you got to batten down the hatches and find a way to get through it. And I think that hopefully with our team, we've gone through some of this adversity, and it'll meld us together. And, and if we can get in the playoffs, I think uh, I think I wouldn't want to see us in any seven-game matchup. That's for sure.